Welcome back to the Space News Pod. My name is Will Waldron. This is a show about SpaceX, NASA, and spaceflight. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about SpaceX's Starship, Super Heavy Rocket. We're also going to be talking about NASA's SLS and Artemis 1 mission. So, SpaceX is Super Heavy, huge rocket, about 400 feet tall. They have a reusable ship on top. They have Booster 7 on the bottom with 33 Raptor 2 engines. This thing is legitimately the biggest rocket to ever be built and to possibly ever fly. We also have the SLS rocket. It's pretty similar. Um, it's not as much, much thrust. It's not as tall. It's not as big, but it will be sending people and supplies to the moon. Something that hasn't been done since the Apollo program back in the 70s. So moving forward with this, SpaceX's Starship will be on that mission as well. They'll be taking the people to the surface of the moon with Starship, with the HLS, the human landing system. So they need both of these rockets to function properly in order to move forward with that program. Now, which one will fly first? The answer is nobody really knows, but we can key you in on a few things that are important for the flight of Starship and for the flight of the SLS rocket for the Artemis 1 program. So let me show you this tweet from Eric Berger. It goes like this. Eric Berger says, NASA says they plan to roll the SLS rocket back to the VAB on January or July 1st. There will be six to eight weeks of work or more if inspections uncover issues before the SLS can be rolled back to the pad for a launch attempt. Now that means that they're going to forego. They're not going to be doing another wet dress rehearsal with this thing. They All they have to do is send it back to the vehicle assembly building and then they fix the things that need to be fixed, check it out, make sure everything is proper, and then roll it back to the pad to do a launch. And then they launch this thing, and then it's it's going. August 23rd through September 6th, possible date September 19th through October 4th as well. Possible dates for the Artemis 1 mission. Now, if we scroll down here, let me show you this. This is, this is an important thing right here this is cool artemis one look at what's already been done verify function of interfaces between orion and the ground systems orion is the crew capsule on top of this thing it's the very very top verify function of interfaces between the sls core stage and boosters with ground systems verify function of interfaces between sls upper stage with ground systems verify function of interfaces throughout the sls and orion with ground systems Integrated test of all SLS and Orion critical communication systems. Uh, test countdown commanding sequence with simulated countdown before rolling to the launch pad. These are things that have already been done. Check out various SLS systems functionality. Check out SLS and Orion functionality with launch pad systems before and after the rollout. Demonstrate tanking and detanking SLS with cryo or super cold propellants at the launch pad. The only thing left is to fix those things they need to be fixed, check them out, and then test and install pyrotechnics for flight termination system. So the flight termination system is something that they use in case something goes wrong while the thing is flying. Flight termination, makes sense, right? They're up there pretty high, somebody sees something is just not right, and what they might have to do is basically blow up the rocket in flight. It happens sometimes, this is an experimental rocket. This isn't something that's ever flown before. Nothing of this caliber from NASA has flown before. So they need to have those systems in place and they're in place of every rocket. So this is a pretty standard procedure. Hey, leave me a comment below. What do you think is gonna happen? Do you think SLS is gonna launch first or do you think Starship is gonna launch first? And also, if you don't have an opinion, just leave a rocket emoji in the comments. That'd be pretty cool. Also give this video a like and possibly a subscribe. Thanks. Now, like I said before, this is a research and development kind of rocket. This is this is a never been flown before. But Eric says between August 23rd, September 6th, September 19th through the 4th of October, mission availability, I think this thing's going to fly as soon as possible. I think it's going to happen late August, early September of this year. Now, does that mean that SpaceX is going to slack on Starship, or do they really care which one launches first? You know, is this a competition? 
people on the internet, maybe you, sometimes me, we all want to have some sort of winner, right? We want SpaceX to go, go, go. We want them to launch Starship because it's so cool. But would it really hurt anybody if SLS went first? I don't think so. So what Starship has already done, there's a few things that Starship has already done. Uh, Ship 24 has already completed two ambient pressure tests, a cryoproof test, uh, two cryoproof tests, um, a cryo, another cryo test, a thrust ram test, and a static fire is coming up in the future. No static fire for that yet. Booster 7 has completed a bunch of things too. Ambient pressure tests, cryoproof tests, about four of them so far. It had another um, uh, ambient pressure test the other night. And tonight they tested um, B71, 7.1, which is a tank, a test tank. They tested that tonight too. So they're getting ready for a static fire of Booster 7. But it could take a while before any more stuff happens because they installed the Raptors, the Raptor 2s, 33 Raptor 2s on the bottom of this thing. And... They have to retest everything in order to make sure that everything works properly. Because once you install the engines, all the plumbing is finally there. Everything is finally there again. So do the tests again. It took them from April of 2022 until June of 2022 to get to this point. Cryoproof test, tank test, cryoproof test, cryoproof test, cryoproof test, static fire, possibly sometime in the future. But could it possibly take April, May, June, three months for them to get through Booster 7 testing? There's a possibility of that. And then they have to do the same thing for Ship 24. So as they're doing these tests, they could stagger them. So it could take three months to do Booster and Ship, but they also have to put the ship on top of Booster. They have to stack these things up and then do a cryoproof test in an ambient pressure test for the stack and then do a static fire of the booster and also static fire the ship and possibly static fire the booster and the ship stacked so this could possibly run into next year into 2023 elon thinks it's going to happen in july and it's possible that they may not have to do any of these other tests i'm just thinking what happens with other rockets when they add these other things in should they test the systems again? It would make sense. This is the first rocket. And if they run on the pad, everything is at stake here. Everything is at stake for ship 24 and booster seven. And not only that, but everything's at stake for, well, the whole program in Boca Chica, Texas. The whole program's at stake because if they have to wait another three to four months to build up the tower again or the orbital launch pad anything like that if they run on the pad it's going to take them months to rebuild they know how to do it now but that orbital launch pad is insanely complex there's thousands of pipes and wires and things that make the rocket go and if they destroy that on the first run because they didn't test everything again there's a possibility that they don't get done with that one before the one in Florida is done. I mean, they could possibly build the next Starship launch tower in Florida bef like before this one gets rebuilt, if it needs to get rebuilt. And I'm just putting this stuff out there. Something like this happens. I'm not a doomsayer. I just want you to know that. I want this thing to be successful. I freaking moved to Texas for nine months because I want to see Starship succeed. So I'm the biggest fan. Like I'm one of the biggest fans of Starship out there. So I want this thing to work. If you have any ideas about this, I want to know about them in the comments. And if you don't have an idea, leave a rocket emoji in the comments because I want to know what you think. Do you think I'm full of it? <laughs> I want to know in the comments. Let me know what you think in the comments. And do you think they're going to have to test this stuff again? Because sometimes analysts aren't right. But sometimes some analysts who are really close to the situation are absolutely right. And they know that possibility of launching this thing this year is kind of sketchy. So other people out there have said stuff. Eric Berger thinks it's going to be later on in this year, which is totally possible. It might not be in July. It's probably not going to be in July. They have a ton of testing to do still. Um, it's a couple days before July. 
and they have road closures coming up. When's the road closure? The next road closure is tomorrow. Um, it's June, uh, June 29th. There's one for June 29th. And there's one for June 30th. Possible one after that is July 5th. So July 5th, they have a they have a five day wait between June 30th and July 5th. So they're gonna miss a whole almost a whole week of testing because of this holiday coming up. So it's possible that SLS will get to orbit before Starship even is ready to be done testing. You know, they may still be testing Starship while SLS is flying. <laughs> so there's a possibility that SLS makes it first. So let me know what you think in the comments. I want to know your opinion. I want to know what you think. And I think all of YouTube wants to know too. The more comments you make about this stuff, the more that YouTube will push good Starship content to you. So thanks everybody for all of your support. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a like if you want to. That would be cool too. And also, if you could, hit the subscribe button. I don't really ask for it that much, but I think it's pretty cool. And also, that's a good way for the algorithm of YouTube to push content to you. Not just mine, but other people's content about Starship and about rockets and about space flight. So thanks everybody for your time. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I'll see you next time on the Space News Pod. Bye-bye.